St. Patrick was a 5th century British Roman Christian missionary and bishop in Ireland, known as the Apostle of Ireland, and in the Orthodox Church is regarded equal to the apostles themselves in the title of Enlightener of Ireland. The story about him is that he was the one who vanquished all the snakes and serpents from the British Isles. And a story that he convinced the people and the Druids and the Celts of Ireland about the Trinity by using the allegory of the shamrock, by showing that this shamrock has three leaves tied to one stem, signifying that the Holy Trinity is three persons in one Godhood. There's only one problem with these stories. They're all bullshit. They didn't happen. They are later legends written in later times. And the legends go even deeper. The main source for these legends is known as the Aglama Na Sionarak, also known as the Colloquy of the Ancients, Tales of the Elders of Ireland. And this text is a story and of legends of St. Patrick and the Finn Cycle. Stories about Finn Mac Cumail. The frame story follows two aged Irish heroes as they travel Ireland with the newly arrived St. Patrick. The pagans, the Druids, are Calty Mac Ronayan, Finn's nephew, and Oisin Finn. Finn's son. Both are members of a warrior band of druid bards known as the Fianna. The point of these legends is to incorporate popular Irish druid legends and Christianize them. For example, in one of the texts, a warrior skilled at magic was also in household of Finn. Kael Croday, Katunik, the brave and quick wounding, the descendant of Nimnan. The strength of his magic was such that he never missed a cast. And any man that his hand bloodied died within nine days, if not at once. And no man he ever killed ever escaped from the house of hell. O oh, Kael, do not cast your spear, its shaft against me in the trees. Each is powerless before it. His posterity tastes no food. My tooth of wisdom, which is a magic relic of knowledge, spoke to me the first day you came. He whose blood you shed comes not again from hell. The descendant of this warrior is blessed by Patrick in the narrative. In the next chapter, the same person tells another story of his other great hero who lived a century before, and it says, My dear poet, grant me a delay until I may have my treasure and my wealth brought here. By no means, said the druid bard, I will not grant it but will satirize it and slander you if I am not given my payment on this very day. Arnalok heard this. He put his face to the earth and did not raise it again, and thus died from shame. This green-clad mound was raised over him, and the stone against which Holy Patrick, you now rest your back, was placed above his head. May he gain heaven through me, said Patrick, as a recompense for his shame, and may he be taken from punishment. His soul was released from suffering at that very moment, and he appeared as a white dove on the stone column above Patrick's head. Patrick 
Patrick is releasing the famous heroes of Ireland from hell. Instead of telling the people of Ireland that their heroes of old are all wicked and bad and evil, they go the route of telling them that those heroes are in heaven because of how great St. Patrick was. St. Patrick was so powerful that he was able to lift people from hell and bring them into heaven. And that type of magic, if you will, would have been very profound to the Druid Celtic ear. This is ripped straight from the playbook of St. Paul himself. When Paul says, I am all things to all people, what he means is, sometimes you have to allow the Gentile world to be who they are and for let them offer sacrifices to idols if it helps them out, if it makes them feel better. Do as you are with your company, as long as you get them to convert to Christianity. Another legend from this Tales of the Elders of Ireland, from Fion, the story is that of Fion, performed 10 years of age, according to the same source that I just mentioned, was to slay Aelin, who is the fire-breathing demon of Tuatha de Danann, who had come to wreak destruction on the Irish capital of Tara every year on the festival of Sam High for the past 23 years, luling the city's men to sleep with his music, then burning down the city and its treasures. And he defeats him by reflecting his fire back with a shield. This happened on November 1st, on the night of October 31st. And this celebration was, was the festival of Sam Hine. The passage says as follows. They went off to Fort Bareneck to the enclosure of the banquet, the west of Carnfree, for three days and nights. They were well attended to there. Well, my dear friend, Kelty, it seems to me that tonight is the eve of Samine. This festival would later become Halloween. During this festival, the world of the gods was believed to be made visible to humankind, leading to supernatural tricks and trouble. Ghosts of the dead and spirits of the other world were also thought to return to the earth during Samhain. To appease deities during this time, sacrifices, generally of crops and animals, were burned in bonfires as protective measures from the evil otherworldly beings and offerings were left out for other visiting mischievous spirits. Tricks and pranks were often played, but blamed on fairies and spirits during the three-day period when line between the two worlds was blurred. Sam Hyde was the time of stock-taking and sacrifice. It was the end of summer and beginning of winter three-day festival as described in the legend that i just mentioned samhain literally means summer's end pope gregory the third was able to use this legend to christianize samhain and make the day known as all saints day the tales and legend of saint patrick are connected to the holiday of today saint patrick's day but also Halloween itself. And when the English populated the Americas, they brought these holidays with them. None of those legends are historically accurate. However, the truth is, according to the Confessions of St. Patrick, at age 16, he was captured by a group of Irish pirates from his family's villa. They took him to Ireland where he was enslaved and held for six years. Patrick writes in his confession that the time he spent in captivity was critical to his spiritual development. He explains that the Lord had mercy on his youth and ignorance 
and it afforded him the opportunity to be forgiven his sins and convert to Christianity. While in captivity, he worked as a shepherd and strengthened his relationship with God through prayer. After the six years of captivity, he claims to have heard a voice to tell him to go home soon, and then that a ship was ready. Fleeing his master, he traveled to a port that was 200 miles away. He was able to escape and go back to Britain. However, his newfound faith made him want to evangelize. And he then went back to Tara with a missionary with him and decided to become an evangelist in the lands of Ireland. St. Patrick, when he returned to Ireland, one of the things he was able to win over the Druids on is that they did not want to participate in the month of Lent. They wanted to keep eating meat and drinking beer. And St. Patrick geniusly allows them to skip Lent if they wish. Which, straight from the playbook of Paul, Paul says, to be all things to all people. Paul says to allow the Gentile people to eat meat sacrificed to idols, if necessary, as long as they convert to Christianity. St. Patrick does the same thing. from Straight from the playbook of St. Paul, he allows the people of Ireland to continue to be who they are. And so the... The legends of these heroes being saved from hell by St. Patrick kind of makes sense in comparison to the actual story of him allowing them to skip Lent because in a sense he's appealing to the people of Ireland, not being hard on them to get them to convert. This is kind of what Christianity does. Most of the Christian churches are built upon ancient pagan structures. For example, there's Mithraeums underneath a lot of churches in Europe. Some of the churches in Italy are built upon sanctuaries of Apollo or sanctuaries of Minerva. There's worship centers from pagan gods that are converted to Christian churches all throughout the Middle Ages. This is what the Christians do. So the fact that St. Patrick is going into Ireland and telling the pagans, just become Christians and don't worry about Lent, makes a lot of sense. The later legends of these pagan druid bards, heroes, being saved from hell by St. Patrick kind of makes sense in the sense that the stories aren't historically accurate, but it makes sense from a conversion standpoint. When you want to get people to be on your side, you appeal to the things they like. And these people like these heroes of old. So you tell them, hey, this guy's St. Patrick. He saved your hero from hell and brought him into heaven. Look how great we are. And you can be great like that too. I like to think of St. Patrick's story. When people try to tell this story, they tell it from a Christian-centric position where it's St. Patrick is going into these uncivilized lands and he has to deal with all these people who don't want to listen to him. And I honestly don't see it that way. I see it as the Romans are going into lands that are not theirs and manipulating people into conversion of their own ways, that the pagan ways are somehow evil and need to be fixed. And I don't think, I don't see it that way, but history is history and we have to deal with it. So with that being said, what do you guys think about St. Patrick? Let me know in the comments and you have just attained true gnosis.